So do you wanna hear a scary Halloween story? Because I have a true tale that once happened to me that's going to shock and horrify you. You see, this story takes place back when I was merely a boy, just an 11-year-old child living in suburban Connecticut. And we were a pack of 11-year-old boys who were all on their own. There was Eric, there was Joe, there was Kevin, and there was me. I had fought with my mother all week about this one because she was vehemently opposed to us being four 11-year-old kids who were gonna go out trick-or-treating all by ourselves. My mother was the typical worrying type, always worried about what was gonna happen or if something wrong was gonna go down. And she did not like the idea of four little boys going off on their own to go trick-or-treating for the first time one bit. But I was a very, very stubborn child and I kept insisting, Ma, what could possibly go wrong? We lived in a tiny and very quiet suburb just outside of Hartford, Connecticut. We were gonna have our mothers drop us us off at the safest, most walkable, and richest neighborhood in town. There were four of us going trick-or-treating, so we had some strength in numbers, and we would look out for each other and get each other's backs. And my chosen Halloween costume for trick-or-treating that year was going to be the Grim Reaper, and I knew I would terrify anybody who tried to approach me. He did the match. He did the monster match. When I was a kid, I was always actually really fascinated with the accessories that would come with my Halloween costume, and I would often pick Halloween costumes that had interesting accessories. Like, I was really into being Groucho Marx one year because it meant I get to have this, like, big fake plastic cigar. Or there was another time where I got to dress up as Chewbacca, and I was most excited by the fact that I got to have his, like, bandolier and his crossbow. Chewbacca! But this year, I was going to be the Grim Reaper. And it meant that I got to have this big, long, plastic scythe that if anybody were to come and attack me, I could wield it and ward off any danger and keep us all protected. Now, often as tales from my childhood go, the battles between my mother and me were often just a test of will. And although she put down strong resistance, I just kept dripping on her and dripping on her all that week, asking for permission, saying I would look uncool because my friends would be able to do this, but I wouldn't, insisting that I was no longer a baby and I could be out there on my own. Which, as a word of advice for kids, if you're ever arguing with your parents, that's never an effective tactic. Well, I just kept dripping on my mother over and over and over again. And eventually she just gave up against this ongoing, relentless assault and allowed me to go out there with my friends and we were off on our own trick-or-treating. We all gathered at the same meeting point at 6.30 at the entryway to this neighborhood, which at the time was like very fancy and very posh and had like walkable sidewalks and was very subdued and didn't have like a lot of ongoing traffic, but it did have a pretty high density of houses relative to the rest of our neighborhoods where we lived. And so our moms dropped us off at 6.30 and the very strict agreement that was signed in blood was that they would be back at that very same spot to pick us up at 8.30. And if we were not there on time, we would be in very, very big trouble. And so off we went in our little kid costumes and our candy sacks, and we started banging on doors, yelling trick or treat, and the candy just came flooding in. Like we were grabbing candy left and right. We had gotten there right on time and we were doing our thing. All of the houses that we had picked were fully stocked with candy. They had these big giant bowls of little mini candy bars and they were offering them to us and letting us take handful after handful and our candy sacks were filling up. Some of the houses were even so wealthy that they had the big long candy bars, like not the little mini fun size that you typically get on Halloween, but the big real deal candy bars. This one house had trays of them and they let us just pick any candy bar we wanted. And all of those opportunities where those trays were presented, I always picked either the Butterfinger or Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, by the way. There is no better combination than chocolate and peanut butter. Nobody better lay a finger on my Butterfinger. Mm -hmm. Without a doubt, that night became the greatest candy haul of my entire life. There is no point in my life when I can look at any other Halloween and say that I was able to collect more candy from more houses. And the four of us were having the best night of our lives. We were having so much fun with our newfound independence. We were running around, cracking jokes, making fun of the little kids. And it wasn't like we were doing anything bad either. We weren't setting off firecrackers. We weren't TP in houses. 
We were at that perfect age between wanting to get as much candy as possible, hang out with our friends, and just not get into trouble. October 31st, 1991 represented this highlight in my childhood where it was the best Halloween of my entire life until everything came crashing down and it was a nightmare. Me and my friends, we had hit every single house in this one neighborhood and we had collected all of the candy we possibly could. And so we started to make our way back to the meeting point where our moms were gonna come and pick us up and take us home for the night. And just as we were getting to the meeting spot a few minutes early, a few minutes early, a beat up rusted old Ford Bronco pulled up to the stop sign and they yelled out to us. Do you kids know where Cheney Road is? And since all four of us had pretty much spent our entire lives living in this one tiny little Connecticut town, we did know where that was, and we gave them very accurate turn-for-turn -turn directions, pointing them exactly to where they needed to go. And so the two guys who looked to be like in their mid to late 20s in the rusted old Ford Bronco drove off, and we continued to wait for our mothers. I remember very distinctly chewing on a Charleston chew as I saw the Ford Bronco turn around and head back towards us and then suddenly make an abrupt brake screeching stop. The two guys jumped out of their Ford Bronco and approached us. One of them immediately yelled at us and said, hey kids, give me all your candy. And then the other one turned on me and punched me right in the gut. I doubled over as the guy snatched my candy bag and the other guy grabbed all of my friend's candy bags. They then hopped back into their Bronco and their tires squealed as they drove away. And just for like a minute or so, my friends and I just all stood there, silent, not knowing what to do or not knowing what to say. Eventually, it was my friend Eric who said, we gotta go tell some adults. And so we ran to the nearest house and started banging on the door and saying, we got mugged, we just got mugged. Somebody stole our candy, please help us, we need your help. To this day, I still wonder about the older couple who lived in that house was thinking as they saw these four boys completely panicked and screaming about being mugged in arguably the safest, most chill little Connecticut suburb you've ever seen. But they were very nice about it and so they let us inside and let us use the phone and we called our moms and our moms came and picked us up and then our moms took us to the police station and we filled out police reports and at a certain point, they even had us looking at like photo lineup cards to see if we could pick out the guys who we thought it were based on the vehicle description and a license plate number I thought I remembered. But to the best of my recollection, not much happened on that front. And I don't think those guys were ever charged with any crime. And we never got our candy back. And it was just kind of a big old bummer. It was a really tough thing to have happen. I was terrified. I had nightmares for weeks afterwards. And while I went out to cause teenage mischief in future years, I don't think I ever went out actually like trick or treating like a child ever again. Like that night very specifically seemed to be the end of any sort of childish like Halloween pursuits that I would ever have for the rest of my life. Which I find to be rather disappointing because I mean, gosh, what sort of monster steals candy from some kids on Halloween. Like as an adult today, I just don't get that one bit. It makes zero sense to me whatsoever. That night, my little sister was very kind enough to share some of her candy with me, so I didn't go to bed that night without candy. And my mother, who pretty much had every right imaginable to give me a big old I told you so, the next day actually took some pity on me. Very next day after school, she picked me up right from school, which was actually rather unusual because at that point, um, she was working as a nurse on like the night shift. And so she was usually trying to sleep during the day because she'd have to get ready to go to work at like, I don't know, four o'clock or something. But she picked me up right from school and she took me to the local drugstore where she bought me several bags of candy on discount because it was the day after Halloween and the candy always goes on discount the day after Halloween. And so despite the fact that I got mugged the night before, my mother ensured that I still had the biggest candy haul of my Halloween career that night. Thanks for watching everybody. Be sure to check out another video if you like these stories and I'll be back again soon. I've got some farm chores to do. Hey, Kels, come on, Kels.